and welcome back to BeHookedCrochet.com. I'm your host, Brittany, and in today's tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to crochet the broomstick lace scarf. This is a free pattern that's available at BeHookedCrochet.com, and you can find the link and more information about that pattern in the description below. For this tutorial, you're going to need one skein of Red Heart Boutique Unforgettable Yarn, a size US 50 knitting needle, a size 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, a darning needle, and a pair of scissors. To begin our scarf, we need to start off by creating a slip knot. And if you're following along with the written pattern, at this point we need to chain 30. So this loop on our hook never counts as a chain. We'll start off by wrapping the yarn, pull through for one chain. Wrap the yarn, pull through for two chains. And repeat that until you have a total of 30 chains. Once you have all 30 chains, we can set this aside for just a moment, and at this point we're going to start using our knitting needle. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be working on a table. However, I recommend the easiest way to start working in the broomstick lace is to place the knitting needle between your knees, and it's a lot easier to control that way. But for now, I'm just going to lay it down, and what we want to do is pull up that loop that we were working on and we're going to place it on our knitting needle. And then you just want to pull that tension so it's a little bit tight. We want it to be able to move up and down the knitting needle, but we don't want it to fall off. Now once you have that done, you're just going to insert your hook into the very next chain, wrap the yarn, and pull through that chain and then continue to pull that loop up and then you're going to place that on your knitting needle and pull the slack. Now insert your hook into the next chain, yarn over, pull up a loop and then place that loop on the knitting needle. And we just want to repeat this for every chain and at the end, you'll want to count your loops just to make sure you have 30. Once you're finished with that step and you're certain you have 30 loops on your knitting needle, that's important for this pattern because the broomstick lace is worked in multiples of five. So if you don't have a multiple of five, you're going to have problems at the end of the next row. When you get to this point, this is my tail coming out here, and this strand right here is my working yarn. Now what I want to do is just grab that working yarn and pull it up to the back side. Now there are two different ways to work the loops off of your knitting needle. The first way I'm going to demonstrate is by keeping all of them on the knitting needle. And in the next row, I'll show you the other method. And it's all personal preference. From here, what you want to do is place your hook underneath five loops. And you may have to work this a little bit. This is one of the reasons why you want to work your loops somewhat loose on your knitting needle. But you'll place your needle under five loops and now we'll pick up our working yarn again. We can collect it up in our hand just like we normally do. And now we're just going to yarn over that working yarn and we're going to pull that through and then we want to chain one. Now this chain one is not counting as a stitch. It's simply acting as a secure stitch in order to keep 
our working yarn in the proper place. Since when we started out this row, our working yarn was down here at the bottom. Now we've secured it up to the top of these loops, which is where we're going to work our next row. Now, at this point, we can slide our loops up, and we just want to slide off the five loops that we've worked on. So we want to do this very carefully, and we'll just pull those five loops over the tip. And now you can pull these back down if you want so they don't fall off your knitting needle. And then collect up your yarn, and you want to twist these five loops. And they already kind of twist naturally because of how we secured this stitch on there. And so we want to just make sure that they're sweeping in the same direction for every stitch. Now what I'm doing here is just collecting up my yarn. The objective here is to single crochet five times into the center of all of these loops. Now I like to stick my finger through just to hold it in place and I'm just going to insert my hook and make my first single crochet. And now we'll do that again. This will be a total of two three, four, and five. Now as I said, I'll remind you again that chaining of one does not count as a stitch. It's simply just locking our new row into place. Now we just need to locate the next five loops in line. And I'm just going to place my hook underneath all five of those loops. Okay, and once you do that, then we'll pick up the working yarn again. And we want to try to make this stitch relatively tight because what we're doing here is we're crocheting this first broomstick stitch that we made to this one. And if we have a really loose single crochet here, we'll have somewhat of a gap in between the two of them. So I'm making sure I'm pulling pretty tight on this working yarn. I'm just going to wrap it over my hook and then I want to pull that through those loops and pull up a loop. So now we have two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops and that's a single crochet. So we've made our first of five single crochets. So again, I'm just going to slide these down because I want to remove these last five that I just worked. Okay, and then we'll just slide those back. Okay, now you just want to let it fall naturally into place. So I can see they're both sweeping in the same direction. And we want to have a total of five single crochets for every single broomstick stitch. And so we've created the first one there. So we just want to make four more single crochets. Alright, now we've got that stitch completed and we're going to locate our next five stitches. And this is our repeat. We're just going to do this all the way across the row. Pick up the working yarn. Again, making sure this is relatively tight. And then finishing the single crochet. Once you get that stitch in place, it's safe to pull off those five loops. And single crochet four more times. Now you want to make sure you catch all of these loops. Make sure they're all in their place.
Okay, and now we're simply going to repeat that for the remaining loops on our hook. So go ahead and create your last broomstick stitches and we'll pick back up at the end of this row. Once you've finished up your last broomstick stitch, it's a good idea to count your single crochets at the top. You want to make sure that you have 30 stitches and once you're certain you have 30 stitches, we're ready to start working the next row. We're going to grab our knitting needle again and I'm going to pull up this working loop from where I made my last single crochet and then just place that onto my knitting needle. Now I'm just going to turn my work so that I've got the back side facing up and we're going to be working in the back loop only of our single crochet stitches. So if you turn this up to the top to where you can see the V's, we're only working into this back loop right here. And we're doing that to create a little ridge at the front of our scarf. So we just want to locate our next stitch. We're going to place our hook into that back loop and then yarn over and pull up a loop and then place that loop on our needle. Now insert it into the next stitch, the back loop only. Yarn over and pull up a loop and place that loop on your hook. Once you've worked all the loops onto your knitting needle and you're certain there are 30, we'll start on the next row. So I've got my working yarn here and again, I just want to take this to the back side. So there are a couple different ways to do that. You can go through the bottom like I just did or you can go over the top. It doesn't really matter as long as your working yarn is coming from the back side. Now I mentioned before that for this row, I'm going to show you a different way of working the loops off of your needle. The second method, it actually starts out the same. So you want to find the first five loops. I'm just going to drop that working yarn for now. Place my hook underneath these five loops and again I'm going to yarn over and then pull that through and then I'm going to chain one to lock the stitch in place but that's not counting as a stitch. And then what I'm going to do differently here is I'm going to remove all of the loops from the knitting needle at once. Now if you choose to do this method, you want to be sure that you're careful about how tight you pull these because the loops as they are when they come off the knitting needle, they are not secure. So they can move up or down, you know, they can become smaller or larger. So you want to make sure that you have a pretty stable workspace if you're going to use this method. Now this method I feel like is quicker than working off of the knitting needle, but it's not as neat in appearance. So you can choose whichever way you like. I'm just simply going to pull that chain one over to kind of open up my stitch a little bit and I'm going to place five single crochets into that stitch. So this part is the same. We're working five single crochets just like normal. Okay. 
Okay, and then what we want to do is find the next five loops. So I just place them on my finger. Okay, and once you've got your five, you want to make sure you, you're you turning it in the same direction because we want our stitches to match. And then we're just going to put our hook into the center of that new stitch and single crochet. And again, you'll want to make the single crochet a little bit tight because we're locking these two stitches together. And again, I like to pull that stitch over to the side just to kind of open up the stitch a little bit. It helps with the shape a lot to do it that way. And again we're going to put a total of five single crochets. We're going to pick up the next five. And we want to turn them in the same direction and single crochet. So finish up this row, we've got a few more broomstick stitches to make. We'll meet back up at the end of this row. Once you've reached the end of this row, again you want to count your single crochet stitches. Make sure you have a total of 30. And now you're probably noticing at this point how messy these stitches are looking. And that's pretty characteristic of a broomstick lace, especially when we're working with a, a finer worsted weight yarn like we are here. So there are a couple of ways to fix your stitches and honestly it's going to improve a whole lot as you go along but I just like to finger block my scarf as I'm working and so I'll pull up on the stitches to kind of open them up on the side and then one of the big things that I feel like makes a big difference is spreading these single crochet stitches out a little bit because when you stretch them out, it puts more stress on these sweeping dropped loops there and it sort of opens up the stitch and makes it look a little bit neater. Now what we're going to do at this point is repeat the same row that we just did. We finished our single crochets, so we're now going to start working our loops onto our knitting needle. So again, I'm going to pull up this loop. I'm just going to place it directly on my needle. And then you'll want to flip your scarf so you've got the back side facing up. We're going to locate the first stitch. Now I'm going to show a little bit of a closer view of the first stitch that you need to work in because this can sometimes cause a little bit of problems in your overall count at the end. It's very tempting for you to go into this back loop right here because this one feels like it's the first stitch. But really it's the stitch that we've already worked this loop on. So if we were to put another loop here we would have two loops coming from the same stitch and it's not a huge deal but it is going to mess up your count at the very end. So we're actually going to jump over to the next stitch, that next back loop and yarn over and pull that loop up and on to our needle. And at this point everything else is exactly the same. You can choose whichever method to work the loops off that works for you. And again, as I said, there are so many different ways of holding this needle to make it go faster. Now working on the table as I'm doing here, for me, doesn't quite work. As I said, I like to work off 
of my with my knitting needle in between my knees and that works best for me. Now I've heard people putting it under their arm or they'll stick it between the couch cushions. You know, depending on where you're doing this, you'll find something that works. And after you've worked several rows, you'll start to get the hang of it and it'll go really fast. That's the cool thing about this pattern. It makes a great gift because it looks like it take it has taken you forever to crochet, but in all reality, since these rows are so tall, it actually only takes a few hours to complete a scarf. Now the pattern calls for 35 rows of broomstick stitch and when I say 35 rows I'm not counting actual rows because you know technically you can count where we're like this step here where we're putting the loops you could count that as a row and then the single crochet row on top of that is a different one. We're not counting that way. We're counting this entire section as one row and so it's written in the written pattern as a, the first pass and the second pass. So the first pass is the loops that we're working onto our knitting needle. The second pass is the single crochet off of the knitting needle. And so we're using that collectively to represent one row. So at this point you should pause your video, work up your scarf until you have 35 rows of broomstick stitches, and when we meet back up We'll talk about how to join the two ends in order to make this a circle scarf or an infinity scarf if you will. And we will be all finished. So once you've finished crocheting all 35 rows of the broomstick stitch, it's time for us to bind off. So you want to make sure you leave yourself a tail that's at least two times as long as the scarf is wide. We're going to be using this to tie the two ends together. So we just want to leave ourselves a nice long tail and then I'm going to pull that tail through the loop on my hook. Once you've got that situated you can thread your darning needle And we're going to be whip stitching this to the other end of our scarf. So you want to go ahead and grab it. And I've got it so that the two wrong sides are together. So the sides with all of the, the visible stitches, that's the right side. And in here is the wrong side. So I'm just going to be laying these two together. And that's where I'm going to start sewing them. Once you've got that situated, I'm going to start by putting the tail, just working it underneath the next stitch. And then when you're looking at the other end of your work, it's going to look a little bit different because this is our original like cast on edge and it doesn't have a very clean visible braid like our bind off edge did. So you just want to do the best you can and try to find every stitch. So we want to try to put one whip stitch into every stitch. That way we're sure that it's secure. And so you'll just go through the first side and in through the back. And then you'll locate your next stitch. And then feed it through. And you'll bring it back through the front.
Okay, once you've made it to the other side, you should end up with the tail portion from where we started. And I just like to tie these two tails together just for a little extra security. And then we can weave them in to hide the tails. Okay, I'm going to trim these just a little bit shorter because I don't need them that long. And now to weave them in, I am going to flip this over onto the inside. And I'm actually just going to weave these two in together. So I'm going to thread both of these tails onto my darning needle. And I'm just going to work it into the seam. Now this shouldn't be visible on the other side. That's why I'm not too worried that I'm weaving the two tails in together even though they're different colors. And just like I always do, I like to weave it under a few of the stitches. And then I'll come back and go in the other direction. And then back again if I've got enough room. And now once you've got that secure, then you're safe to go ahead and trim off those tails. And at this point now, your scarf is all finished. This concludes our tutorial today on the Broomstick Lace Scarf. It's a free pattern that's available at BeHookedToCrochet.com. I'm your host, Brittany. Until next time, stay tuned for more free tutorials and free patterns from BeHookedToCrochet.com. Thank you.